So today I'm going to talk about an inside-out learning model, but in order to do that I want to contrast that to the traditional learning model. Now I'm going to talk about this in terms of higher education because it's really what I know best, um, but I think some of it is transferable into K-12 education, but in reality I'm, I actually think K-12 education is a little bit ahead of higher ed in um, understanding cognitive issues and learning as a pedagogy. Um, I also want to mention that Part of what I'm doing here is actually funded through the National Science Foundation through a TOOS grant where we're studying open education resources and how to make those best, most useful for um, college students. So I'm going to talk today about the traditional learning model first. And traditionally, or actually currently, as it works right now, students come to class and it's usually the first time they've seen material. And they sit in class in a lecture setting, often with PowerPoint slides and the teacher in the front of the classroom um, speaking to them about what they're learning. And then they leave the classroom and they go home and they work, they either, they might read the book, um, they work on homeworks, homework problems or problem sets, they might apply what they've learned to a project, and they might, we're hoping they synthesize it, like write an essay or expand on what we've talked about in class. And then they generally come back to the classroom and we assess, either by them turning in the homework or turning in a project, or we give them a midterm and or a final. So that's usually how this assessment works. And that's a pretty common model, and I'm sure you've been through it, and um, it's, it's really what most of our classes are. I actually had a student do a study, and it ended up about 85% of the classroom time is spent in this lecture mode. Now, if we contrast that to inside-out learning model, and in this learning model, we actually are flipping what we do in each of the classes, and, and Khan Academy calls this flip the classroom. Other people are calling it that too. We are calling it inside-out, but it's really the same thing. The idea is what you used to do in the classroom, now you're doing at home, and what you used to do at home, you're doing in the classroom. So what we do is before they come to class, we require that they watch a a video, sometimes in a lecture like this one, sometimes an open education resource. We also might have them look at some articles or review some YouTube videos, watch a TED talk. So we require that they do something ahead of time. And then we ask them to apply that knowledge in just a cursory way, either a reflection or some sort of accountability about, yes, I, I, I learned, I did look at that stuff and this is how I'm proving I did. So we have them do that before they come to class as a way of then when they come to the classroom, they're actually ready to actively learn. Now, you guys all have done this in your lab classes, and we do it here in our labs too. All the things that Martin runs are all um, have, have an application that they're supposed to have learned beforehand. So we might have a lab activity. We actually might have them actually work on homework problems in the classroom in small groups. I have been really successful in working with project-based learning where what they're learning on the content videos, they're actually applying to the projects in class and I'm there to coach them on those projects. We also might do some synthesis. I've had, a, I've worked with a, a, a colleague of mine in, in the physics department and he just does demos and asks challenging questions to the students um, as a way of synthesizing what they already learned before they come to class. And then the assessment, um, we sometimes do this outside the classroom, but we're finding that actually um, there's a little bit of problems associated with assessment and we're more ending, end, ending now to demonstrating in the classroom. But what we're doing is sort of a demonstrated mastery. So we don't actually test them on midterms and finals. We test them in a way that they have multiple chances to demonstrate mastery, that we actually believe that in a sort of peripheral way that um, their learning, actually, we would like them to learn at almost an A level, not a C level. So demonstrating mastery allows them to have multiple options of doing that. Um, so that's pretty much how we look at the, um, the learning model. Um, I think now I'm going to go and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that are available in open education resources. And I know you probably know most of these. And then after I do that, I'm going to um, actually give you an assignment to do before you come to class. Each day, there's 
more and more open education resources available to us to look at. This is, I'm just going to give you a couple, some you might already know, and um, some are, might be new to you. Now, what I'm using here to make this video is called Camtasia, and it's a really easy thing to learn, although I would say that it does take a little bit of time. Also, one of the barriers to it is you actually have to, well, you don't have to, but one of the ways to do it is to see yourself on video, and that is a bit disconcerting. But this thing I have up here is called Sailor Org, and it's a collection of college-level courses. And I know that sounds maybe not what you would want, but there's some really great um, I, um, videos on this and learning modules especially that you might be able to take advantage of. Another one is Hippocampus. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it also isn't. Most of them are interactive kinds of um, learning modules where students have to answer questions and then are, um, are given feedback. They also have a lot of um, connections to other um, open education resources, like the Khan Academy, which is this one that I have here. And most of you probably are aware of Khan Academy. Um, if you go down here, we can see that many, many, many videos that they have, that he has prepared for, I think he said there's 3,200 right now. And if you haven't seen these short videos, I would definitely look at them because they, um, even for me, I find it interesting to um, review them. Also, you can get um, some videos, some really great videos on um, iTunes University. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it is a, it is a really great, and I'm actually going to bring this over here, iTunes University. I found some on architecture because I knew that you, some of you might be architecture teachers, but there's a whole bunch, and you can see from NYU, um, uh, IE University, I'm in Declan, all, some USC University, McGill University. There's a lot of things that you might want to look at. Some of them are kind of long, like an hour long, but I've also found them that are shorter on iTunes University. So that that's also an option. So that is, um, those are some of the open education resources that you might consider looking at. And the last thing I want to do before I um, actually have you come to class is that I'd like you to spend a couple minutes and if you think about this learning model that I, I, we've, I've given you here, um, sort of as a model, I'd like you to think of what are all the problems with it? Sort of what are the issues that if you were to implement this, what would be the thing that um, would be hard for you to implement? And I, I would just like you to sort of consider that. 